Hey guys, who knows who Simon Chan is? Now, I went to one of his meetings the other day. Um, if you don't know who he is, he, he's the founder of MLM Nation. He's the Oprah of network marketing. And he had a really interesting background. Now, I actually met up with Simon Chan the other day for a, a very private meeting between him, myself, and a few other people. And some of the nuggets that he gave us was just incredible and far more than uh, anything that I'd learned from before at any other event that I'd been to. I'm Janelle from JanelleEmma.com. If you don't know who I am, please go over and check out my website or check out my business page. I help stay-at-home mums to build a kick-ass home business, creating a proactive and purpose-driven life. So reach out to me or subscribe to my videos if you feel that you want to learn more from what it is that I teach. Now, I, I as I said, I learned the other day from Simon Chan some amazing uh, nuggets and benefits from different things that... I didn't really even think of yet. And some of these were those six and seven figure earner qualities that we, um, you know, we've got to have these qualities if we really want to get to that stage in our business. Put, put in one in the comment if you're someone who wants to get to that six figures or more earnings. You know, who doesn't want that, I say, especially if you're one of those stay-at-home mums with an amazing background um, where you've come from nothing and then you go to that sort of a um, an income it's such an amazing journey and an amazing story to hear from with other people. But in saying that, Simon Chan is obviously not one of those people, but he really relates to us in that sort of way because he came from a very different background where he was told that he couldn't do many things in his life. Um, and he even thought that he couldn't you know, go to different um, academic things, that he couldn't do well in school. And he was told that he should just learn science and maths and go and be a doctor like his dad. And he obviously knew himself that that was not what he wanted to do. And this is where you really have to listen to your own uh, heart and your own head and know what your purpose is in life and do something that's right for you, not because other people say. So um, some of the qualities that he spoke about were just you know, we, we look at these qualities, but we don't probably really take them in enough and realize that this is the, the journey to how these people got to these six and seven figure earning um, ways in their life. These, you know, these incomes that they're getting at that stage in their life, which is just incredible. So one of those ones was visualizing. He said, spend a lot of time seeing them, seeing yourself in the future. So this is where, you know, most of us know you've got to visualize what you want to uh, put out there to the universe. You know, we have to really think about that as it's happening now to us, even though it may not be. We've got to pretend in our mind that it is and play that movie for ourselves to make our mind believe that. And that's what puts that out to the universe and makes it happen for us. And so he was saying, <clears throat> have a think to yourself, at what age did you stop dreaming? Most people between the ages of 10 to 15 usually stop dreaming because society and old programmings in, you know, with people that have told you different things have told you that um, dreaming is just something that's woo-woo. That's something that you can't achieve anything from and that you shouldn't be, um, you know, they, you know how you used to say as a kid, people would say to you, stop, stop daydreaming. What are you thinking about? You know, they would tell you that as a kid. And, and that's where people start to think that they can't do that, that they can't dream up their dream life or that they can't dream up their successes. And so he says, go back to dreaming, go back to visualizing things for yourself. Um, he actually has his own, um, I suppose it's a Word document where he's got all his different successes in there on a Word document, pictures and statements and testimonials from people of all the different successes that he's had in life that over time he knows, you know, that he's dreamed up most of those before they even happen. So how powerful is that that you can do that? And that's that's one of the main qualities that those seven and six figure earners have is that they visualize and they see what their future is and they see what they want for their future before they even get it. Number two was that they uh, think really, really long term. So most people in network marketing, um, they think about, you know, how can I, how can this be my golden ticket to where I want to go, or how can this be my get rich quick uh, scenario to get my ma uh, family some money quickly? And we know that network marketing isn't about that. Some people still have that mindset that that's how network marketing has to be, which is frustrating. Um, but most people know that this sort of business and industry is something that's very long term. It's something that you can't get money quickly. And if you do, you usually fall down quickly as well. So you may earn a quick income, but then you may lose that income quickly as well if you're not doing it in the right way. And this is where you want to think about the fact of 
think about your business as something that is really long term. What long term visuals and goals uh, do you have in place for yourself for your business? Think about, you know, oh, this hasn't worked in the last year and a half, so I'll give it up. That's short term thinking, isn't it? It's short term thinking where you haven't probably even uh, learned enough about the industry yet. You probably haven't even spoken to enough people yet. You're probably not asking for referrals enough. And that was one of the biggest thing that long term seven figure earners do is they ask for referrals. That's a really big one that we a lot of the time forget about. We think that because that person we've spoken to says no, that that means a no for everyone in their circle. But if we just say, okay, I can see this is not for you, but if you uh, can think of other people that may want uh, to be a part of this, let me know. And that's that referral and that's long-term thinking because you don't know where that referral could lead or someone three <laughs> three referrals below could lead as well. So long-term thinking and not short-term. Number three was leaders invest in themselves. So we know that if you're investing in coachings and seminars and paid webinars and um, different online um, strategies and things that you've paid some money for, some sort of a program or a coaching thing that you've paid for, that is you investing in yourself, investing money into your business. And this is where you can then use that to teach it to other people. And obviously that's where you um, see it start to come to fruition or start to grow for you because if you're not investing in yourself, how are you going to keep growing your skill set? How are you going to keep growing your mindset? How are you going to keep believing in yourself when you're getting those no's or when you're getting so many rejections in your business? How are you going to move forward on that if you're not um, upgrading your skill set all the time. And this is why he says invest in yourself, invest especially in your mindset and how you can move forward with that and invest in um, different coachings or different programs or webinars or seminars that you can learn from that really are something that you will get a lot out of that you can teach to other people and also implement on a daily basis to grow your mindset. Number, number four was never stop recruiting. So always recruit even two people a month. Um, and that's up until you get your residual income. So when he was meaning that, he was meaning, you know, these six and seven figure earners don't, uh, they never stop recruiting. They may still recruit two people a month, even at that six and seven figure level. How incredible is that? Now he was saying it, the reason for that is a lot of people, they may get to say $10,000 or $20,000 a month where they're earning that um, and then they stop. They stop recruiting because they think, awesome, I've made my goal. I'm now making $20,000 a month. That's what I got last month. So now I can stop recruiting. He says, but that's not that long-term thinking of that residual. That's not long-term residual thinking. So, you know, if you want that passive income, that residual income that comes in exactly the same amount or grows month after month after month, just say it was $20,000 a month you're looking for and your income is growing or sitting at that stage month after month and it's done that for I don't know, the last 12 to 18 months, that's when you can say, I can stop recruiting. But unless it's at that stage and you know you can sit back for a few months and do something with your family or go and do something else that you love, like traveling or um, whatever that may be for you, and your income is either staying at that level or growing, that's when you can step back and stop recruiting. But he he says that even though six and seven figure earners don't stop recruiting because you just don't know what can happen in the future. You don't know what can happen to your team. You, you don't know what can happen um, to your company and all that sort of thing. So obviously, keeping on recruiting two people per month, no matter you know what situation that is, and that's what will you, these six and seven figure earners do on a monthly basis, even at their level, which is incredible to know. Uh, number five was no emotional attachment to the one person and don't focus on the ones that aren't doing enough. So uh, we know this one um, very well. Don't focus on the ones that aren't doing enough. Don't focus on the ones who, who talk the talk, but they're not act, you know putting it into action. Or the ones that seem very slow and don't seem to be coachable, don't focus on those people because... You know, you focus on the wrong people, you're wasting and losing time. And I know as a mum, as a stay-at-home mum myself, I don't want time freedom. We can't really have time freedom with kids, but we want time flexibility. So we want the, the flexibility to do what we want with our families and when we want to do that, when we choose to do that. And if you're spending a lot of time on the wrong people or the people that aren't, um, you know, putting in the work, then you will lose that time flexibility because you're spending your time with the wrong people and in the wrong places within your business. So make sure that you're, um, there's no emotional attachment to anyone that you're recruiting or that say no to you. 
don't have that emotional attachment this is a business so make sure that you treat it like a business um, and the more no's you get you just brush off and go right oh that doesn't matter we can go and look for the next five people but also don't put too much time into the ones that are talking a lot but aren't actually doing anything for your business or aren't looking like they really want to do this long term like you do so I hope you got value from that guys um, I was just going through there with time management as well which one thing he quickly spoke of which isn't a part of this but I wanted to say it there have some time in your diary every single day your diary your planner your journal whatever that is that you look at on a daily basis have time in there for yourself that you block out for prospecting and following up only so he actually was saying that he um, he would have between 4.30 and 5.30 every single night that he would either be prospecting or following up with people. And he said his family knew not to interrupt him at that time. They knew that he'd be on the phone or that be, he'd be talking to people at that time. And so they knew that the family had to work their schedule around him doing those pros prospecting times within each day. And I really, that one really resonated with me. And um, it's something that I've always, um, you know, not put to the side, but I've never really structured a time for when I prospect. I've just done it when my kid, it suited my kids. Um, but now I've actually got it written in my diary because once it's written there and it's visual and you've got a time limit on it, it's more of that scarcity that you may not do it if you don't. So I really love that he pointed that out to us at the last minute. Thanks so much for listening in, guys. Please share this with your team and your friends if you feel this was of value to you and you want to share it with them to get value from it as well. Subscribe to my videos if you feel that you're getting value from these and you want to keep watching them um, later on. And comment below if this was of value to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on that. Thanks, guys. See ya.